Uh, our principal, Dr. Shiv Kumar, is already there. Yeah, and I think Dr. Agarwal is also there. Good morning. Welcome, welcome Dr. Shiv. Welcome, Dr. Agarwal. Welcome, Dr. Agarwal. Welcome, Dr. Shiv. Can you hear me? I'm audible. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. I'm Professor Dinesh Singh is not here yet. No, uh, no still, we can't uh, see him yet. Sometime, He's not here yet. Three oh. minutes are still there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Enjoy. Uh, Vipin, have you shared the YouTube link on the group Telegram? Yes, we are live, ma'am. Yeah, I'm sure. On uh, that link, uh, I think uh, hasn't. Vipin, my there. video is not starting. Dr. Shiv ko bhi co-host bana dijiye Vipin. Dr. Shiv and also you make them the co-host now. Otherwise the video will not come. Yeah ma'am. Done. I cannot start my video. Because it is uh, sir, aap aap try karo. Aap aap try karo. Try karo. Aap try karo. Ho yes. Is done yeah. sir? Haan. Thank you. Thik hai. Thik hai. Thik hai. Sir, you can also check, Principal Sir. Okay. Uh, I have asked Professor Dinesh Singh to join. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Good. I think Dr. Shiv, your video is mm, still not video is on. not coming, huh? Uh, please check for your video. Your video is not coming. It's not okay. Yeah, yeah, now it's come. Good morning, Dr. Shiv. Welcome. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Very good morning. How are you? Fine, fine, sir. Good, 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 good. What is your subject, sir? My subject is mathematics. Are wow. Good. You are a mathematician. So we have called yeah, yeah. a mathematician. I am yes. happy that <laughs> Professor Dinesh Singh is here today. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. He is my teacher. Are great. Great. Sir, good morning and welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, sir. Always we trouble you and you find morning, time sir. for us. Good morning, sir. Shiv Kumar here. Yes, sir. Shiv. Yes, sir. We have made a new jodi. Shiv and our old friend. हाँ Yes, sir. Online, online learning, online teaching, and uh, creating MOOCs, sir. Achha. Uh We are ready. Uh, if we are ready, Nidhi, we yes, can sir. start. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. Ankita, Dr. Ankita, Ankita, you can start. Yeah. Yes, sir. Dr. Ankita, please start. Good morning, everyone. 
Professor Dinesh Singh, former Vice Chancellor, University of Delhi, our esteemed guest for today, Dr. Shiv Kumar Sahdev, Principal, Shivaji College, Dr. S.P. Agarwal, Principal, Ramanujan College, seniors, colleagues, and participants joining us from all over the country. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the one week online faculty development program on ICT Enhanced Teaching, Learning and Creating MOOCs, a program for teachers, academicians and researchers organized by Shivaji College under the aegis of IQAC in collaboration with the Teaching Learning Center and Research Development and Services Cell Ramanujan College. The program is under the aegis of Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching that was launched by the Ministry of Human Resource Development in 2017. One of the main objectives of this mission is to facilitate teacher training by constituting teaching learning centers in various institutions of higher education in our country. We are very honored today, sir, to have you with us, Professor Dinesh Singh, Chancellor, K.R. Mangalam University, to encourage us for this new learning experience we are going to embark upon. Professor Singh was bestowed with the Padma Shri, one of India's highest civilian awards by the President of India in recognition of distinguished service in the field of literature and education in 2014. A man with a humble demeanor and exemplary auditor, he has primarily focused on empowering the youth of today via educational reforms throughout his career. It is a matter of great pride and pleasure that we at Shivaji College are celebrating our landmark 60th year. Our aim is to work towards our vision of transform one life, transform the nation, by reaching out to the world through digital channels and through real life community interactions. The current unprecedented pandemic has instilled a wave of learning and teaching amongst educators all over the world using the online mode of dispensing knowledge. With the introduction of the national education policy by the government, Stress is being laid on creating more opportunities with the use of technologies and online platforms to proceed with unhindered flow of knowledge. Shivaji College has left no stone unturned to smoothly adapt to this new mode of education and all efforts are being made by the faculty to bring about holistic development of our students even in the absence of physical interaction. Educational institutes all over the country are making their faculty competent in this new mode of, uh, mode of tutoring to become high quality online content creators. All of these efforts are in the direction of fulfilling the dream of digital India. Massive open online courses, MOOCs, are in high demand as they are self-paced. They provide options for unlimited enrollment, goal-oriented and easy to access as they are being delivered online. The focus of these programs is to blend learning, working and collaborating locally, globally, as well as universally. They are truly game changers in today's world of education due to their ease in access, low cost involved and unlimited participation. This is Shivaji College's first initiative to focus on this very upcoming theme of MOOCs that relies on connectedness over the globe and personal enrichment of all our participants. Our aim is to conduct this program is to change how we look at lifelong learning and connecting with people all over by delivering information using ICT tools. And we have received an overwhelming number of more than 1,100 participants for the event. We hope that through these sessions, which can be attended with ease, a feeling of connectedness can be achieved between educational institutes and faculties, and it validates the process of learning and the use of analytics to acquire knowledge. The participants would be able to successfully create e-content, 
be abreast with advanced concepts in online teaching modules and be able to develop their own moves our dynamic principal dr shiv kumar sahdev has spearheaded these initiatives at shivaji college as we have ventured into this era of disseminating education via ict tools and he has thoroughly encouraged our faculty to adapt to these new methodologies as well i invite dr shiv kumar sahdev to say a few words thank you ankita professor dinesh singh dr sp agarwal esteemed participants my dear colleagues i am very happy that we have uh, organizing this course in collaboration with the teaching learning center of ramnojan college and i on behalf of shivaji college welcome all the participants all my esteemed guests in this inaugural session uh, this pandemic has taught us new ways to go for blending learning and we have adopted uh, this uh, online teaching in our uh, course work and i am sure that for the time being we have to live with this and uh, the main motive behind this course was to uh, make our faculty more comfortable with the uses of uh, new technology we have with us and as uh, we know that moocs means the massive online uh, uh, courses and i am sure that once finishing this uh, after finishing this course all the participants will be able to manage their uh, online teaching in a more effective and fruitful manner and they will be able to create their own e content and they will be able to create their own develop their own moocs and uh, i am happy and i my best wishes to all the participants and i am sure that this will be a happy journey for all of us together thank you very much thanks a lot thank you sir for your encouragement i now invite my colleague from ramanujan college dr nidhi over the proceedings thank you dr ankita a very good morning to our chief guest padmashri professor dinesh singh sir chancellor kr mangalam university dr sp agarwal sir principal ramanujan college dr shiv kumar sahdev sir principal shivaji college my organizing members from shivaji college and ramanujan college and dear participants who have joined from all across india i nidhi mathur on behalf of ramanujan college once again welcome you all to this one week faculty development program on ict enhanced teaching learning and creating moocs jointly organized by teaching learning center ramanujan college and shivaji college with the onset and advancement of technology the concept of e learning is fast gaining pace and momentum thus making it widely acceptable by people from all walks of life owing to the covid-19 pandemic which has resulted in the temporary closure of educational institutions across the globe e learning is one arena which has remained unaffected and instead has witnessed an exponential increase in it more so with the ministry of education erstwhile mhrd government of india launching an initiative like Digi digital and bharat and digitized india about the need for online education it is the need of the r for all educational institutions to facilitate dissemination of knowledge through e resources someone very rightly said if you want to teach people a new way of thinking give them a tool the use of which will lead to new ways of thinking true to its potential ramanujan college under the stewardship of our principal sir dr s p agarwal has conducted more than 16 online fdps through its teaching learning center under pandit madan mohan malviya national mission on teachers and teaching scheme of ministry of education erstwhile mhrd thus imparting training to more than 30000 teachers being in a state of complete isolation has taken a toll not only on our physical 
and to maintain well-being, but has also resulted in monotony and boredom. There is a vast difference between e-learning and e-training, where the former imparts knowledge, the latter inculcates practical and hands-on experience to the learners. This very FDP aspires to bridge the gap, leading to a wholesome and well-rounded personality of academicians. The course outline for this FDP has been created by experts who are proficient in their respective fields and have taken into consideration those faculty members also who are not well versed with online platforms and softwares. So before I move forward, I would like to read out a few rules for this FDP. Rule number one, there will be a quiz after every session that needs to be attempted by all the participants. So the purpose of this quiz is to assess the knowledge about the topics that have been covered. These quizzes shall account for 60% of the total number of quizzes. Rule number two, at the end of every session, participants will have to fill up an online feedback form. Rule number three, there will be assignments after every session that account for 80% of the total number of given assignments. But we would still recommend that participants should submit all their assignments to promote understanding of their subject knowledge. Rule number four, a final online quiz which will cover all the topics throughout the FDP will be conducted on the last day in which participants need to secure a minimum of 40% the last and the most important rule. As the workshop is being organized and under the most prestigious Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching Scheme, we at TLC Ramanujan College give prime importance to willing and serious participants who are eager to learn. In this context, it should be noted that e-certificates will be awarded to only those participants who fulfill the above criteria. Moving on, our principal, Dr. S. P. Agarwal, will be welcoming all of you. A brief profile about our principal. Dr. S. P. Agarwal, Principal Ramanujan College, University of Delhi, is a dynamic visionary, exemplary leader, outstanding administrator, passionate researcher, and a motivational teacher and mentor. As an administrator and leader, he has brought about a paradigm change in the functioning of Ramanujan College, erstwhile Dejbandhu Evening College, by being at the forefront of establishing structures, systems, and processes, implementing creative and innovative ideas, and leading by example. As a result of his guidance and concrete efforts, the college got an A-grade accreditation from NAC. I welcome you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Nidhi. Thank you for the nice words. Uh, first of all, good morning and welcome to our dignitaries uh, and uh, learned participants who have joined us in large numbers. And uh, we are really thankful to all the participants. Uh, I think more than 1,100, as I have been told, uh, that in each and every uh, program which we organize, we get very, very large number. Uh, let me tell you that this program on um, ICT and MOOCs is not the first one. This is, I think, the ninth or tenth program which we are organizing. And as uh, uh, you know, Nidhi told you that more than 30,000 teachers have already been trained in ICT and uh, uh, development of e-content and MOOCs. Uh, our own Padam Shri Professor Dinesh Singh, uh, not only a former Vice Chancellor and Chancellor KR Manglam University, he's a multi-facet, multi-dimensional uh, personality. We always uh, recall him and uh, he is available for us. It is, it is the uh, you know, fortune of this institution and Delhi University that uh, such a good administration, administrator, academician, and a researcher is with us. Uh, 
Dr. Shiv Kumar, Principal Shivaji College. My colleague uh, from the organizing team, both from Shivaji and uh, uh, Ramanujan College and uh, dear participants. Once again, welcome on behalf of Teaching Learning Center, Ramanujan College. In this one week uh, effort of uh, ICT, enhanced teaching, learning and creating moves. Uh, friends, uh, as has been told that uh, our purpose in all these FDPs is to train teachers in new technologies. And uh, during this pandemic, uh, for the last four months, our emphasis has been, uh, you know, not only training our own colleagues uh, from Delhi University and other colleges, but training the teachers from all over the country. And in a way, it is in our self-interest that we are training ourselves also, because you know how uh, we got this idea. You know, when when Ministry gave us National Resource Center to launch a refresher course on um, ethics, environment, and human rights on same platform, which is Government of India platform. And, uh, you know, once they assigned us, we all in this college were, uh, you know, kind of apprehensive how we should do it. And everybody was, uh, you know, talking that, uh, you know, let us have experts from outside, let us do this, that. And uh, the first thing we, was, we were supposed to do was to create a five minute video so that ministry is satisfied that, yes, we have the capability to do it. So, um, you know, everybody, raised a finger on me that said, you do it. I said, fine, I will do it. So, uh, you know, that's how we started our journey. And it is not that I did the best. Then my colleagues came, young colleagues, and they did the wonderful job, you know, when, when we encouraged them. So this is how, you know, things move. We have to try our, uh, 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 you know, as uh, Professor Dresing always say, say, said, that hands-on training, do it with your own, uh, uh, you know, with on your hands, with, with, with your own self. Unless until you do yourself, you will not be able to learn anything. I'm telling you, these courses may be, uh, you know, uh, taught to you uh, most practical and hands-on training, but still you have to do yourself. So what we want from this training, that you should be able to create your own MOOCs after one week. And we will tell you the procedure. We will tell you each and everything. The trainers are very good. The, the uh, you know, the practical approach is there. The, the uh, you know, hands-on, how you start will be there. Uh, but uh, as, as uh, I'm telling you that it is your own efforts which will make learning easier. And only then you can disseminate this knowledge to your students. Now, in our topic, we have two things, you know, uh, you can see ICT and MOOCs. And ICT, as you know, is uh, information communication technology. Now, very important thing is that information communication. Now, the, uh, you know, unless until you have the information, you have the communication tools, you can't do anything. And internet is very, very important very important because you know in some part of our country especially in jammu and kashmir the people are suffering because we do not have good internet connectivity i was just reading a report that more than 75 percent of our students not i'm not talking about the metros are not having access to the technology i'm not saying internet technology they don't have laptop they don't have smartphones through which they can be trained because in, in online teaching, main problem is that we should have the technology. And internet is one, and then hardware is another. So unless until we have these two things, and uh, this is the responsibility of the educational institution and maybe the government to, to ensure that these technological equipments reach each and every student of the country. Um, uh, I still, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I still remember that how when Professor Dinesh Singh came as vice chancellor, the first thing he did was to give laptop to each and every student. And let me tell you, some of the colleges, including myself, we are using that equipment till today. Of course, it is uh, it has become redundant, but still, uh, you know, it is a very useful tool. My teachers are using it, and my students are using it. Of course, we have to 
upgrade each and every time now uh, see another important thing is that massive open online learning this is not a new concept friends uh, this is going all over the world you know you see lot of portals on this uh, especially i can name coursera.org you must have heard of it it's a uh, british based uh, company which has launched massive courses in each and every area similarly all the good universities whether it is harvard stanford or or any one you know they have online courses and most of them are free of cost what they do is that uh, they offer free of cost but if you need a certification of course you will have to pay so uh, you know and 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 these are on different kind of platforms see uh, you know uh, most of the courses were started on modela uh, kind of uh, uh, you know portal but now edx portal which we are using in this institution we have our own portal edx and uh, we are in the process of launching uh, several courses uh, you know for the benefit of students on this portal and any one of you who are interested can come in with your proposal and we are happy to to put it on our portal because that is the way uh, we can uh, you know blend the 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 uh, education uh, uh, technology or education knowledge because uh, unless until we share we cannot uh, you know uh, uh, do justice to our students and uh, you know on, on that line itself that is why we collaborate with each and every institution uh, whether of delhi university or outside that so that we can we can uh, increase our potential of doing the things for the benefit of society now similarly now uh, once once we have uh, you know discussed all these 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 important points now basically developing the e content uh, in the respective field is a very important tool now see one thing is very important in this that at least we can't uh, you know uh, 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 you know do the uh, uh, we cannot compromise the academic ethics or you call it plagiarism see basically if everything is on the portal everything is in the public domain you can't you you have to be very careful i can give you an example that uh, you know what happened was that most of our programs today also we are live on youtube uh, you know what happened was that uh, we we uh, uh, run a saraswati vandana in one program and that was live on youtube and saraswati vandana was taken from somebody's uh, you know uh, uh, portal now they immediately you know uh, uh, warned us that this is a copyright violation so you know we have to be very very careful while doing this and i'm glad that now teachers will be more responsive once this online teaching will be uh, very very popular and we we will able to be uh, very uh, we will able to do justice on this account now uh, uh, creating moocs and then the assessment see uh, you know first thing is that uh, you, you develop your courses and how you develop your courses always i can say briefly few points that suppose you are uh, uh, doing it in mathematics or in statistics maybe uh, you know sometimes we assume that it should be of very very high high quality high things it should be simple very simple and it should be module based five to six modules in a course not more than that and then the assessment criteria so if we follow the, that thing that let us be simple let us understand the uh, perspective of the student because we are not making it more for for uh, you know advanced learners we are doing it for general learners but yes we can we, we can always do for advanced learners also but let us start with simple uh, uh, programs and uh, uh, you know as i said split in 5 6 7 7 units and that's it and you can have on specialized areas like you know uh, suppose we are getting into uh, programming maybe on java maybe on python maybe on machine learning maybe on artificial intelligence maybe on data analysis like we have been doing lot of work with professor dinesh singh on uh, excel uh, and uh, other data analytic tools like r so all these things can be done through these portal and another important aspect is that it should be outcome based learning because we have to uh, be very careful you know today that what will be the outcome of what we are doing let us say we are doing this program 
we should be very specific that what is the outcome so that is very very important uh, from the point of view of the learner similarly i can say that uh, you know in online teaching you can do lot of innovation see uh, you know i was seeing a tv about two weeks ago that a malipuram a small place a school teacher was taking a lesson and it, she was using i think augmented reality and uh, just uh, just much better than a classroom uh, setup see everything was uh, you know shown practically whether if, if galaxy is uh, being shown a uh, sky is shown and if if uh, uh, you know uh, the, the historical monument uh, is taught then monument is shown so all these things are very important when we innovate online teaching because most of the time our teachers are scared and they don't have the required material for online teaching because one hour of online teaching requires you to have at least 3 hours of material it is not a simple thing and then another important thing is the fatigue of online teaching you need to be very careful in my institution you know uh, my teachers are saying that sir you have allocated very few lectures to us uh, i said don't worry we don't want that uh, student should be taught for 5 hours in a day no i just want 2 to 3 hours teaching and similarly i want you to relax do the quality work don't uh, get into uh, that okay we have to uh, give five lectures for a discipline course or six lectures so take six lectures and doing nothing no i want three lectures should be taken and that's it i think that is more than sufficient on a online teaching module so uh, with this uh, i don't have more time here but uh, uh, thank you very much once again to professor dinesh singh and to shivaji college for joining hands with us we are always eager as as i said and let me tell you professor dinesh singh there was a time when we wanted collaborations but nobody used to take us but today everybody is looking for collaboration with us so it is the uh, your blessings and fortunate uh, uh, situation of this institution that we are able to do so much with this uh once again i i welcome all the participants and they are asset to us and i believe you will learn uh, something out of it and you will be able to create your own moves uh, and and uh, you can be in touch with us all the time and we will guide you in each and every field another important thing i i missed was that uh, see online teaching today can be done with various open source modules there are lot of things like uh, we started in the pandemic with zoom but the problem is zoom is a paid thing and uh, uh, you know uh, there was some uh, apprehension that it is a chinese product and all those things but now there are lot of products then today in our institution we have made it compulsory that we will be using microsoft team which is a very powerful uh, you know tool and can do each and everything and uh, you know what happened my hindi people said that sir we cannot do it in hindi no we devised a situation and we our experts uh, told them that you do these changes and it can be taught in hindi so uh, uh, my 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 view point here is that we will be launching several courses on that and we might have one lecture here in in uh, this uh, uh, program also uh, our team is expert in that area and if you will use it uniformly i tell you this is a powerful uh, tool of online teaching uh, you can take your attendance recording everything can be done through that software and i was really fascinated with this so with this once again welcome and thank you very much thank you sir you have always encouraged and motivated us to strive harder in our future endeavors moving on we have amongst us an extremely talented versatile intellectual and an astute scholar words actually fall short to describe his illustrious career meritorious background and his charismatic personality padma shri professor dinesh singh sir former vice chancellor university of delhi and currently serving as chancellor in k r mangalam university is a distinguished mathematician and educationist he has studied at st stephen's college and holds a phd from the imperial college of science technology and medicine london which is ranked amongst the top 10 universities globally he is a distinguished senior fellow at advanced hack space adjunct professor at imperial college and university of houston 
sir has been awarded the padma shri one of the highest civilian awards of the government of india by the president in the year 2014 professor dinesh singh has also been conferred honorary doctorates for his work as a mathematician and an educationist by the university of edinburgh the national university of ireland the university of houston and the national institute of technology kurukshetra an avid painter a claimed public speaker and a student of gandhian philosophy professor dinesh singh sir has published numerous mathematical research papers in international journals and his mathematical work is cited in several books monographs and papers sir it is my utmost privilege and pleasure to introduce you again in less than a week over to you sir thank you thank you very much uh, uh, ankita and nidhi for the kind words that you have said about me and i must express deep appreciation to my friend and former colleague dr agarwal who is an amazing person i don't know whether he ever sleeps at night or not because he's always up and about always creating new activities that is why his college has done so well sir i i always take 8 hours sleep <laughs> <laughs> i don't know when you sleep but it doesn't look like you sleep you're always active and my close friend and also student and guru bhai both you know sadev shiv he has been a friend of mine i when i started my teaching career he was a student but he took his phd with professor subhash aroda who had taught me in my masters when i was an msc student professor aroda taught me and so shiv and i have many kinds of connections we are guru bhais he has also been my student that he was my colleague at delhi university so it's a pleasure to connect with all of you i also sometimes wonder professor dr agarwal places a huge amount of faith in me and he seems to think that i may have something reasonable or worthwhile to say and every time i come on such an occasion when i connect i know one thing for sure i'm not sure what i give but when i exit such an event i leave a wiser person even today i was listening with great attention to what dr agarwal was saying and there was much there that he has said which i strongly believe in and i honestly say this i don't think there is much else left for me to say so i think it will help each participant it will help all of us if you pay attention closely to the ideas that dr agarwal has set forth today they are really worthwhile and i believe all these sessions are recorded so presumably participants may be able to review these sessions over time as many times as they like and that will be to their advantage the session as i have understood is about online learning distance learning mooc so on and so forth and the best way to make sure that this is happens productively and you know i'll tell you something very interesting but straightforward technology is not something that we should think of in a fashion that it intimidates us there is really nothing to it as long as we sit back and understand what is good learning all about if you think carefully good learning or you could say good teaching practices have very little to do with what sort of platform you are using if you understand the basic essentials then no matter what platform you use whether you are inside a classroom whether you are out on the road side whether you are on a technology enabled platform such as this it will make no difference to you 
And there's something very important that Dr. Agarwal said in the middle of his talk. And I hope each one of you has picked that up. He has emphasized that we must keep things simple. There is a saying in Hindi, Saralta me Prabhuta hai. There is divinity in simplicity. The problem with most of us, and all of us are mostly prone to this weakness, in our eagerness, we sometimes complicate things. We start doing too much. Believe me, go to the heart of the matter. If you understand the heart of the matter, and let me tell you what it means when I say go to the heart of the matter. You know, long ago, there was this business of the state of Hyderabad just after independence, when the state of Hyderabad under the rule of the Nizam was rebellious and was not willing to come under in India's dominion. And there was much debate. There was all kinds of complications coming in. As I have understood from people who witnessed the cabinet meeting that took place, in the cabinet meeting of the government of India, they were all present and people were speaking about this and that, the United Nations will intervene and how will we do, should we send the army, what will happen if Pakistan attacks, so on. Sardar Patel was quiet. When everybody had spoken, he just said something straightforward and simple, to the point. He cut to the heart of the matter. He said, we cannot afford to let Hyderabad go away. It is in the heart of India. That is clear. We need to have it with us. And the only way, because the Nizam refuses to listen to us and he has created an army that is creating havoc there. Tonight at 12, our police will march into Hyderabad. That was a euphemism for the army. And we will take it over. And the meeting ended. And next morning, Hyderabad was part of India. My point is this. Cut to the chase, get to the bone, get to the heart of the matter, and everything else will fall into place. If you look at the Rig Ved, to my mind, I always cite the Rig Ved as the first MOOC in the world. It was massive, it was open, and in one sense, it was online. In other words, it was using the technology available at that time, the oral tradition. It got written much later. Have you ever asked yourself that what was it about the Rig Ved that this marvelous book, this piece of knowledge, this piece of great wisdom from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and from all the way Maharashtra in the West to all the way to Assam and beyond in the East, it permeated and was blessing all of India in undiluted form. You go to any Vedshala today, or you had, if you had been alive in those days, had you visited any Vedshala, any part of India, the Rig Ved was learned, taught, and practiced without deviation. There are no two versions of the Rig Ved. There are no two versions. Everybody memorized the Rig Ved exactly as it had been sent down. My point is, have we ever pondered to think? Have we pondered on what was it? What was the magic of the Rig Ved that without any of these so-called modern technological tools, India could imbibe it in undiluted, unadulterated fashion? And if you think closely, you will understand. One, it has marvelous ideas. There are great ideas of practice in the Rig Ved. I am forever fond of quoting one of the opening stanzas of the Rig Veda. Ano bhadra kretabo yantu vishvata. Let noble thoughts come to us from every direction. Just think about this. What can be more marvelous? Who will not like this? This openness of mind. This willingness to embrace good things. That is so heartening. Naturally, you will take to it. But there are other great things in the Rig Veda. That's the first part. The second part, they understood what was the pedagogical principle that would allow it 
to be imbibed in undiluted, unadulterated fashion by everyone. So when they constructed the richas of the Rig Ved, they used the best practices available, the chands, the meters that were created, the incantations, the way you are supposed to recite, all those are perfectly prescribed. And therefore, there is no possibility of dilution or adulteration. Those are the pedagogical principles. Do you think it would be easy to memorize a book of the depth of the Rig Ved with so much in it? But it has always been done. Why? Because they constructed the richas in a specific fashion. And the way they are chanted is prescribed with precision. So they had cut to the chase and they ensured that the pedagogical principles allowed it to be imbibed across the length and breadth of India. That's the key. That's the thing we should understand. There was no technology and yet it was imbibed all across India. It was a massive open course. That's what we need to do. And let me narrate a simple experience that I had in 1992. I was just starting out my career at the University of Delhi. I was a lecturer here. And I was asked to give on Doordarshan National six live lectures on school mathematics of the 12th grade to test a new satellite transmission technology that Doordarshan had just bought from the United States. And I decided to teach the calculus of the 12th grade. There was no technology available to me. In the studio, I had only two cameras. There was a camera facing me and there was a camera above my head. And I used to stand and there was a large table with chart paper, several sheets of chart paper of a large size and three colored markers. That's all I had. So there was no great technology the way we look at technology today. 12 classrooms across the country had been enabled so that the students of that classroom could talk to me, they could interrupt my lecture, they could ask me any question they liked at any time. But all of India could watch whatever was happening. So all of India, schools at home, everywhere could watch everything live these 12 classrooms could also talk to me. And I used chart paper and I used things that all mathematicians do. We drew lots of simple pictures and I gave six lectures. I remember when I finished my first lecture, some self-appointed experts in mathematics, I was then a simple young lecturer. So they thought they could bully me they went to the top bosses of Doordarshan and they said, what is he teaching? This is sixth standard mathematics and he's messing up everything. Who have you brought? So on and so forth. And Doordarshan panicked. The top bosses asked to see me. And I told them, you've already put your faith in me. There is very little you can do now. Give me time. You watch what happens and then we will decide. But believe me, I'm trying to keep things simple. The thing that Dr. Agarwal said, keep things simple. Now, let me tell you what happened. I finished my six lectures and I had a lovely time because the students were very lively. While teaching, they would interrupt me. They would stop me. And students love to do these things. You know, they want to ask you a question which you cannot answer. And I enjoyed this very much. And then I went away after six lectures. One month later, Doordarshan sent for me. Can you please come and see us? So I went. I was not sure what was the matter. They took me into a large hall. In the hall, there was no furniture. There were sacks and sacks piled across the floor of the hall. Bore, tied. They told me, this is your fan mail. There was no email in those days. So those, these were letters that had been posted, snail mail, handwritten letters. Of course, I could not open everything. I must have spent about an hour, two hours there. I must have read a hundred odd letters, all handwritten, and from different parts of India. 
I remember I had received letters from Kerala, I had received letters from Kashmir, from Assam, from Andhra Pradesh, from Delhi. What was in the letters? Nothing. They asked only three things. Why did you stop? Why don't our teachers teach us like this? And for the first time, we have understood and liked calculus. My point is this, what Dr. Agarwal said, keep things simple. I kept them at such a straightforward letter. I still remember there was someone running a tuition center who had written to me that, you know, I've been teaching this topic for so long and I had pain inside me because I never understood why we do what we do in this topic. Now the pain is gone. So it touched people's lives. There was no great technology. It was just simple clarity that brought things to the hearts of people. Remember this always. Don't get intimidated and don't overuse technology. But let me also tell you something else. The internet is a huge resource. It is an enormous and powerful resource. I'm taking an online course, totally free, nothing, called Harnessing the Power of the Web as a Knowledge Device. And it's a freewheeling course. I have undergraduates enrolled in the program. And we discuss anything and then we say, let's see if we can find it on the internet. Let's see what it has to say. Let's see whether it is authentic or not. Let's see if we can practice it or not. And let me give you an illustration. So in my last discussion, and I don't call it a lecture, don't ever get into this habit that we teachers are so fond of, that we enter a classroom and we start talking. Don't get into this lecture mode. Learning is much more than just talking to the other person. Don't make that mistake. Make it interactive. Never hesitate to tell the student, I don't know, let us find out. Believe me, this is extremely rewarding. The student will never be intimidated by you. And there is no person alive who can say, I know everything. So there is no shame, no embarrassment in saying, let's learn. So in my last interaction, we were discussing whether we can make ice without electrical power. And I said that I have read from long ago, many, many years ago, I had read historical accounts about how the Mughals in India used to make ice in Delhi itself near Kashmiri gate in the middle of the winter without electrical power. And then they would store the ice deep inside the earth. And then when summer came, they would open up those places and use the ice to cool their drinks. I asked the students to find out for themselves whether there is anything available on the web on this matter. And then every time we find something, we hold a discussion on whether it is authentic or is someone trying to fool us. That in itself is a huge learning exercise. Then we look at YouTube videos, we look at texts, we look at other sources, other websites. And believe me, I was amazed at how much I learned on ice making without electrical power, not just in the times of the Mughals. In Persia also in the Middle Ages, they had their own techniques of making ice. Amazing. The students brought this for me. And in modern times today, there are Israeli scientists experimenting in the deserts of Israel on how to make ice without electrical power. There is so much here. There is physics, there is design, there is economics. This is hands-on. It is transdisciplinary. And it is a journey that we all undertake. Don't convert it into a lecture. Believe me, the traditional form of MOOCs are not delivering. They are not delivering the goods. People are making the mistake of putting the cart before the horse. They are emphasizing too much of technology and the actual pedagogy has been put into the background. They are not succeeding. The YouTube is a huge learning resource. Every time you wish to engage in a learning interactive program with your students, I urge you 
it takes effort as dr agarwal said hours of effort troll youtube if you look at any topic and if you look at many 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 videos eventually you will find a bunch of videos that are so clear so focused so lovely i am also working with someone on a technology platform again for learning purposes i love doing these experiments so i decided to see if we could learn pythagoras's theorem from youtube and it has hundreds of videos it took me some effort but i could identify three marvelous youtube videos which are better than any learning that you could do in a classroom to learn the theorem of pythagoras believe me and then as a teacher you have to build a story around all these resources i'm not saying that that is the only way as dr agarwal said there is no one standard way you design that which suits you but remember this if you don't make it interactive if you don't make it hands on if you don't connect to the real world it's not going to help you so keep these principles in mind technology today is so easy to handle that when i interact with my students on the web right now i use many devices in parallel while i am talking to the students through either microsoft teams or through zoom at the same time i use my ipad i have my own drawings sketching here on this ipad i share the screen takes no effort i wish to show a video i link to youtube live and share that with my students or i share images over here whichever way i like and you can use there are all kinds of tools you can use a stylus an electronic stylus and write notes if you wish to show a diagram do it in color do so many things but believe me none of this will succeed unless you embody the principles that we stated at the beginning and i assure you if you keep things simple work hard before you get into the session keep it interactive i'm repeating myself engage your students create their imagination i did that also with students again of another university where i asked them to discuss how alexander fought his battles what were the ideas of a general in which ways did he use his tactics to win those battles and i was amazed at the amount of resources i found on the web i didn't have to teach we just learned together and each one of them is asked in groups to make a presentation on different topics and because you have such good technology those presentations which are interactive have animation have text have voice over have video they are allowed to be imbibed by everyone keep experimenting do not stagnate and you will create finally your own best practice to create good technology based learning i really have nothing more to say beyond that i am grateful to dr agarwal to shiv to everybody else here for giving me this platform and i look forward to great learning happening through such platforms thank you very much thank you sir thank you thanks a lot for a very enlightening lecture uh over to nidhi uh dr raishna please take over for the moderation uh, uh, thank you so much sir it's always a pleasure to hear you so uh, do we have any questions from the participants or any of the attendees uh i uh, think we we vipin, have uh, uh, you ha uh -huh. vipin if there are any questions on youtube or so we have bucket full of uh, uh, pra uh, praises for this wonderful lecture so it is with such great ease that you connect our history with today's technology and uh, show us how we can uh, actually use our historical examples to create uh, create content for our own students and how Uh, so as sir has repeatedly said that let us get to the heart of the matter and everything else will fall in place let us not just complicate things let us just be as simple as possible because 
there is no uh, there is no use trying to complicate anything any content we have to ensure that anything that we say is simply understood by our students and uh, as sir has rightly said that it is time that we own the technology to be able to use them with ease for smooth online delivery of our content it is high time that we started delivering our content our educational content and use the technology to be able to smoothly uh, carry on this online process of uh, imparting the education and uh, also it is important for us to keep experimenting so that we can create our own good practice and uh, move uh, and help our students also to think out of the box and come up with new innovations and um, so that was a really really excellent session that we heard i think we are all motivated to jump in, uh, into this development uh, program and uh, hope we all uh, gain from what you have imparted to us thank you all for attending this session today and uh, thank you sir for delivering a very encouraging talk thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir thank you uh, uh, program so over yes sir uh, yes sir there are any questions so i think we'll wind up and uh, for all the participants who are here live uh, we will be posting the videos and all the other content for today's for today by 12 o'clock so you are requested to continuously watch the portal and uh, access the videos there thank you thanks a lot sir thanks sir. thank you so much thank you Uh, we are waiting for participants to leave, right? Niti, Niti, uh, Niti, are we waiting? We can no, no. We can we can leave. We can exit. We the can meeting, leave. We can yeah, exit yeah, the meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank you all. It was a wonderful session, Niti. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Thank, ma thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Thanks. Ankita. Thank you, Ash Ashna. Okay, Very nicely okay. done. <laughs> thank you, Ankita. Great. Okay. See you then. Bye bye.